This is the first in a series of videos on OpenSCAD. In this introductory video, we're going to look at the fundamental shapes or primitives that make up the foundations of nearly everything you'll be modeling. We'll look at common transformations you can apply to those primitive shapes, and we'll play with a few modifiers you can use to make visual debugging easier. To keep things from getting too heavy too quickly, this video will only scratch the surface of what primitives, transformations, and modifiers can do. I'll include links in the description for relevant detailed documentation, as well as info cards for targeted domain-specific videos as I produce them. Let's start with the basic cube. Calling it a cube is a bit of a misnomer. Technically, the object defined doesn't need to be a symmetrical cube, but rather it can be any rectangular cuboid, or anything most folks would call a box. The cube primitive requires a size parameter and allows for an optional Boolean parameter defining if the cube should be centered on the origin, true, or have its corner on the origin, false. The size parameter can be a single number for actual cubes, or an array consisting of length, width, and height for less regular box-shaped objects. There are several variations on how the parameters can be expressed, but we'll save those details for a separate deep dive session. Next up, we'll look at the cylinder. For a basic cylinder, you only need to define its radius and its height. The center parameter defaults to false, which places the base of the cylinder at the origin sitting on the xy plane. If you choose to center your cylinder, it will move down such that the cubic center of the cylinder is at the origin in all three dimensions. Now, where the cylinder really starts to show its flexibility is when you define different top and bottom radii. You can even take either radius all the way down to zero to define a cone. The last thing I want to point out is, as I'm sure you've noticed, the cylinder isn't exactly round. Like all objects in OpenSCAD, the curve of the cylinder is approximated by a collection of flat faces called facets. The more facets you have, the more curved your object appears. However, the harder it is for your computer to manage and the longer both previews and renders will take. Managing facets in detail will be another deep dive session, but for now it's sufficient to know that the special fn variable defines the number of facets you want to use for your curved objects. For example, if we increase the number of facets to 100, you can see that our cone looks much smoother, but you can still see the texture. If we go all the way up to 360, it looks practically smooth. Going in the other direction, we can leverage the cylinder primitive to make all manner of regular polygons. In 3D printing, this combined with the difference function we'll talk about later, is especially useful for defining pockets to hold threaded nuts for final assembly. The last shape I want to introduce today is the sphere. To define a sphere, just provide a single number that is the radius of the sphere you want. The sphere will be placed at the origin in all three dimensions. Much like the cylinder, you'll notice that the sphere is made up of many facets. As before, we can adjust the resolution by playing with the fn variable. Now that we have some fundamental shapes defined, let's take a look at the transformations, starting with rotate. A quick note on syntax. You may have noticed that all object definitions end with a semicolon. That's how OpenSCAD knows it's the end of a statement. Transformations apply to whatever object or group of objects follow them, and as such do not end with semicolons. If you want a single transformation to apply to a group of objects, you can enclose the list of objects in curly braces, but we'll talk more about that in another video. For a single object like we're looking at today, it is sufficient to simply enter the transform right before the object it will act upon. In the most common use case, rotate takes a vector, ABC, which defines how far in degrees the object should be rotated about each axis following the right-hand grip rule. This means that A is rotation about the x-axis from the positive y-axis towards the positive z-axis. B is rotation about the y-axis 
from the positive z axis towards the positive x axis. And c is rotation about the y axis from the positive x axis towards the positive y axis. So you can run them independently, or you can also combine all three together in any combination of your choosing. Next, let's look at translate. Translate moves its child element or elements along the specified vector. In plain language, the first value moves the element along the x-axis, the second value moves it along the y-axis, and the third value moves it along the z-axis. Translations can be independent or combined, and the values can be positive or negative. For our final introductory transformation, let's look at scale. Scale scales its child elements using the specified vector. In plain language, the x value of the child element is multiplied by the first value in the vector. The y value of the child element is multiplied by the second value in the vector. And the z value of the child element is multiplied by the third value in the vector. As we've seen, values over 1 increase the size of the object along the relevant axis. Values between 0 and 1 will reduce the size of the object, and negative values will flip the object along the relevant axis as well as changing its size. To wrap up this introductory video, I want to talk just a little bit about the debug and background modifiers. In order for these modifiers to make sense, I need to quickly touch on previewing versus rendering. Throughout this tutorial thus far, I've only been doing preview operations because they're faster. Full object renders for 3D printing, machining, etc. take longer to complete because they process the full assembly geometry as opposed to preview, which does the bare minimum to get a picture on your two-dimensional screen. Modifiers work differently in previews and renders, and that's what makes them special. The debug modifier highlights its object tree in transparent red during preview and does absolutely nothing during render. The background modifier highlights its object tree in transparent gray and removes it from the render tree entirely. It can be a bit much to wrap your head around, so let's walk through one last example. We'll start with a 20 unit cube centered. Next, we'll add a cylinder with radius 5 and height 30 so it sticks out both the top and the bottom of the cube. Now, we'll use the difference operator to subtract the cylinder from the cube. Open the SCAD supports all the normal Boolean operations like union, difference, and intersect, but we'll go into that in another video. All you need to know right now is that the difference operation will put a hole in the shape of the cylinder into the cube. Now imagine you have a more complex assembly and you're not entirely sure what the part looks like that you're subtracting from your main block. Instead of pulling objects out of the difference operator, you can just highlight them with the hash sign for the debug modifier. This highlights the object in transparent red without impacting the render. When previewing the assembly, you can see that the hole is still in the cube and it's obvious what the cylinder looks like as well. When we render the assembly, the cylinder is gone and the hole in the cube is exactly where we expect it to be. Now, what if you wanted to keep an eye on your cylinder, but also see what the assembly would look like without it subtracted from the main block? This is where the background modifier comes in. Change our hash to a percent sign, and you'll see that the cylinder turns gray, but also the hole in the block is gone. When we render the assembly, it's like the cylinder never existed, so it's no longer subtracted and the block is now intact. If you've made it this far, I'd like to take a second before wrapping up to say thank you. Let me know in the comments below which deep dive sessions you would like to see first, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when new videos come out, and please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video so the almighty algorithm knows to share it with more folks. Thank you again, and we'll see you in the next one.